Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. Hey, you know, over the Thanksgiving holiday, I did some reflecting, and not really so much self-reflecting as... If you get a tan, you won't reflect so much. Exactly, like a vampire. I don't show up in mirrors. <laughs> uh, I was thinking back on how much our life has changed in, say, the last, well, 10 years. And so... You mean arthritis? <laughs> rigor mortis. <laughs> That's a little more severe. It's going to take more than just a, a shot. Right. Um, so today on the show, we're going to talk about ways American life has changed in the last 10 years. I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Well, hi and good morning. Welcome to another rousing rendition of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. And Ronnie, we're so glad that you've uh, all of us have joined us today. Uh, we appreciate your time. We know that there's a lot of things you could be doing, yep. but you choose to watch this show, and that means the world to us. Or listen, if you're on the podcast. Absolutely correct. Yep. As 2020 gets closer, people begin to look back, much as I did, on the years past and reflect on how much has changed. Just 10 years ago, the world was a much different place. Some changes were so subtle and came around so gradually, probably didn't even notice them. Although 2010 may not feel like such a long time ago, <laughs> physically it does, uh, when you consider how much has changed since then, it seems like it was actually way, way in the past. Yep. So the biggest thing that I've noticed, Whoops. just happens to be number one here, people are basically online junkies. Oh, yeah. Wow. People actually have to go on vacation and unplug. Yeah. It's gotten so bad. Yep. Uh, so this one says the average smartphone user checks their Facebook 14 times a day. That wow. seems low. And that's just one social media platform. There's also uh, uh, Instagram, Insta Pinterest, uh -huh. uh, Reddit. Reddit. Uh, We're on Reddit now. We once are in a while. on Reddit. Mm -hmm. uh, and various messaging apps, and people are glued to their phones. Yep. In fact, people are expected to spend more time online watching videos, shopping, and browsing. Uh, through Facebook <clears throat> than watching TV this year. You know, Ron, uh, next on our list is something that's just, television is changing our lives and it's about to change the way we watch television. Yep. Uh, it used to be you couldn't wait to see the new movie that was coming out on Friday. Yeah. And now TV shows are all the rage, not movies. Just over 1.2 billion tickets were sold in domestic movie theaters in 2017. Which, which was a 25-year low for the industry. And they're worried about it, believe me. As ticket prices keep rising, how much did you pay to go to see that uh, Mr. Rogers movie? Five bucks. Oh, you went in a matinee. We went on Tuesday. But what if it wasn't? Uh, it would be, I think it's at least... $15? I, I want to say it's at least... 10 bucks, but okay. I, I don't know. I haven't paid full price in a long time. <laughs> well, there you go. You want to know a little bit about Ronnie? I go on Tuesdays. <laughs> there it's you $5. go. $5. All right. How did he get to be so wealthy? $5 <laughs> movies. As ticket prices keep rising and streaming platforms keep offering more options, the majority of which are TV shows and original series, the downward trend is likely to continue. I just had this talk with my son over the holiday. It's going to get to a point now where you pay for everything you watch. Yep. Yep. Sure. All right. All right. Next up, movies are rented online, not at stores. No more brick-and-mortar blockbusters. You know, Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy in 2010, uh, based solely, I believe, on the advent of Netflix. Of course. Uh, Everybody has And, of it. course, Redbox didn't help their cause either. No. Um, you know what? And nowadays movies are available online, mm -hmm. whether they're for rent or purchase, uh, just a couple months after they hit the big screen or even sooner if the movie isn't doing well in the theaters. I went and saw a movie at, uh, Playdio two weeks ago. It's called The Irishman. Oh, sure. With Robert De Niro. It got everybody from mm -hmm. freaking good guys in it yeah. and Scarface too. It's got Al Pacino and mm -hmm. De Niro and Pesci and... A Scorsese film. Anyway, we saw it that Tuesday. I believe it just came out on Netflix 
this past Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think I read that in the news. The Irishman, and it's probably in a series. Because I'm an online junkie. Yeah, and it's a three and a half hour movie, oh so I'm sure they break it up into you know sections, like uh, Netflix is known to do, which is fine. But uh, yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Movies one week, two weeks later, Netflix. Ronnie, when we were kids, the new record would come out on Tuesday, and we would, of course, for you it wasn't quite so much a walk. Yeah. For me, it was quite a ways. Walk to Tower Records to buy that new 45. Fresh out of its sleeve, you drop the needle from your turntable on it, and the first thing you hear would be, and then the music would start. Yep. And your life would change. And that's how we got music when we were kids. Today, music is streamed. Yep. Not even downloaded anymore. No. Streaming was around before Spotify. But Spotify is often credited with changing the music industry. The service came to America in July of 2011, and the rest, as they say, is history. Since then, several more music streaming services have been created, including Apple Music and Tidal. You know, when I go to the gym... Is that what you call the bar? Yeah. (laughs) Gym? I have some music on my old-fashioned iPod... What's an iPod? That I listen to. It's music, strictly music only. and But every once in a while, I forget to charge it up. Uh-huh. And then I go to iTunes, uh-huh. and I have a few... I'm sorry, not even iTunes. Uh, what's it called? <coughs> oh, crap. It's a it's an app. Uh, Pandora. Oh, yeah, I have Pandora. I go to Pandora, and I have some channels saved. Mm-hmm. And I just listen to Pandora. Pandora picks the music for me. And I've picked a channel, like I have a Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young channel. I have a Bruce Hornsby channel. That play, and it, it doesn't strictly play that. No. They play music in that same genre, right. I say. Mm-hmm. So there'll be Emerson, Lake & Palmer on there. And sure. Everything that's similar to that. It, it It's almost like it knows what you might want to hear. Right. So I think that downloading music uh, into an iPad and iTunes... That's so yesterday. And once again, it's changed the music industry as yep. we know it. Hey, this next thing, boy, this is true, and I'm working to alleviate part of this truth. Mm-hmm. People are heavier today. Yeah, I know I am since my surgery. America's overweight and obesity problem is undisputed, but people are still not losing any weight. In fact, they're only getting heavier and heavier. Health experts often use the word epidemic because most of the 40% of adults in the United States are obese. This is almost double the figure from a period from 1988 to 1994 when just over 22% of adults were obese. The average weight of adult men is now 195 pounds, (laughs) slightly higher than 195 and a half in 2010. The average weight of an adult woman is 168 and a half, compared to 166 in 2010. I bet it was around 130 uh, in the 60s. Oh, yeah. Well, and men typically were smaller. I mean, you look at the NBA, and outside of a few exceptions, very few people in the NBA in the 60s were over six foot three or four, maybe. Right, right, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty tall person back then. You know, my wife used to watch Fox News religiously, relentlessly, in fact. <clears throat> and the other day I said, you know, I noticed you don't really watch news much anymore because I I, I do. Um, people, she goes, no, I get all of my news from Twitter. Oh, there you go. Really? Hmm. Chances are you're reading this article on your phone That's what we're doing. After seeing it on Facebook, about 55% of American adults get their news from social media often or sometimes, according to a study. Uh, Social media topped print newspapers as the outlet providing news to people for the first time last year in 2018. Well, and then this goes right along with that. Fake news is everywhere. Oh, man, that's the truth. Start typing fake news in Google, and almost immediately you're going to see a suggestion, fake news generator. Uh, Concept has been defined as fake stories that appear to be news spread on the internet or using other media, 
usually created to influence political views or as a joke. And I can say right now, it's almost always to, you know, to influence political views. Correct. And, you know, a general rule of thumb is if it's, if it's too hard to believe, there's a reason. Right. Yep. You know? So, I mean, I, and I think that, and I have seen that they are starting to step up their enforcement mm -hmm. of fake news on Facebook. Right, right. Um, that's the best thing they could probably do because it is unbelievably di divisive for the country. And I think that's one of the biggest problems in the country right now. You know, when I was a kid, we had to memorize phone numbers. <laughs> Here's what's really weird to me. I don't remember what my phone number is. But my Uncle Bob and Aunt Betsy have had the same phone for about 65 to 70 years, and I know their number. Yeah. I know their number, but I don't even know what number I had when I... I don't even know the number I have now on my cell phone. I still remember my two best friends' phone number. I know. You've said that before. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand. People, psychologists like to use the term outsourcing our brain. When was the last time you actually memorized a phone number? that wasn't your significant others. I don't know my wife's number. Everything you need to know is a click away. In many cases, you don't even need your phone anymore. Alexa, Siri, or Cortana will instantaneously provide you with all of the information you might need. Yep. And this is so true also. They text more than they talk. That's me. Yep, that is that is so you. You are so up to date. I know. I, I, I don't like to talk on the phone. Uh, as a way to cut costs, some companies no longer provide voicemail as an option for their employees, especially if they don't interact directly with co the clients. The move is proven popular, perhaps unsurprisingly. People, especially millennials, rarely talk on the phone anymore. Uh, 2014 Gallup poll found that the text messages outrank phone calls as the main source of communication for people under 50. Or in this case, uh, 60. over 50. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it used to be, uh, you'd be at the family barbecue and somebody bring a date and you'd say, hey, how did the two of you meet? Well, we met in church. Oh no, we met at the state fair. Right. Uh, we were at a dance and we did. Nowadays, people trust technology more than other people when it comes to matters of the heart. Dating apps are the norm. And there is no stigma attached. There was a, oh, she must be desperate. She's on a dating app. <laughs> a recent Stanford study found that meeting online is now the most common way couples first connect. Dang. So different than what we knew. Man, People so now rely on algorithms. I used to I used to go to school with Al. <laughs> the Gorithm family was... Pretty good baseball player, if I remember right. <laughs> As opposed to friends and family to be introduced to a potential significant other. <laughs> Algorithm, man, he could play third base. <laughs> he was. He was all that. Yeah. Uh, I'm guilty of this one. Okay. Binge-watching shows is the norm. Okay. So my daughter got me started on Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, you told me. I remember. God damn, if I didn't watch... Like two shows per day, which gets you through uh, an entire season in one week. Wow. And I think there was eight seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, seven, eight. that's an remember. investment of time. And so, and they're each an hour plus. Some of them are like the end of season shows are a little over an hour. But you know what? I've done the opposite where I've watched... Uh, Breaking Bad, say. Oh, right, right. I watched it just as they were released, one one show a week. And uh, you kind of, you have to have, like, what was I watching last week? What were they doing? And then they show a couple scenes from the previous, like, right. okay, that's where they uh, were. That's where I left off. But some shows now are really, they are binge-worthy. So... Yeah, it's really, uh, it's a craze that all the kids, the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> Thank you. I was, I was one of the cool kids for a Me, minute. Me, unfortunately, <clears throat> my attention span is not quite that long. <laughs> However, I will tell you this right now. Ronnie, I, I am going to uh, spill my guts. I, Lou Gallagher, have watched every episode of Two Broke Girls. <laughs> Don't judge. Please don't judge me. 
<laughs> I've seen them all. It's it's on at whatever time of day it's on. It just happens to be the only thing on that's any right. good. Yeah, exactly. That's and I, I, every time, and then they start showing them. It's like oh, I've seen this one, but right. there's nothing else on. Exactly. I'll watch it again. What am I gonna do? Well, I see. I've seen the mom episode too. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I remember when we first got VCRs. Yes. And you'd record something, and you could fast forward through the commercials. Right. You know, that was the greatest thing known to man at that yep. time. DVR is arguably one of the best inventions in TV history, no doubt. No dispute. No. Nope. You don't have to sit through a single second of paid announcements. Networks have responded and have shed ad time. Some, not sports, right. I can tell you that. Right. But you know what? One of the other shows I watch all the time, I've told you this, it's called Ridiculousness. Yes. With Rob Deerdeck. Yes. Uh, on the newer episodes, when I hit fast forward, there's now, maybe you've seen it, there's now a function where you can go two, three, four, or lightning fast past the commercials, and it'll stop right before the show comes back. <coughs> That's the coolest invention so far. So DirecTV has something pretty similar. If I hold down my double forward arrow uh -huh. for like a, a second, it skips 30 seconds at a time. Oh yeah, yeah. So, and every commercial is 30 seconds to a minute. Right. 30 seconds at a time, click it in, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and then by the time you click 30 seconds for the very last time, it actually runs back just to the start of the show. I gotta try that. Uh, what, what, who do you have for cable? Uh, DirecTV. Ah, damn it, okay. Yep. All right. All right, this one is not making a lot of companies happy. Cell phone cameras have replaced portable cameras. And film. Yes, yeah. Uh, DSLR, Nikon, Panasonic, digital cameras, film cameras, video cameras, they've all become pretty much obsolete. Uh, unless you're a professional photographer, and apparently even they don't need the gadgets anymore. Movies are now being shot with smartphones by prominent directors. That is really, the cameras on phones now I have about a thousand dollar camera. It's a 35 millimeter camera upstairs. It's a Canon. It was a professional camera. I used to play around with photography. My phone camera takes better pictures. You can put filters on that professional camera uh -huh. and get some really amazing shots. But you know what? Uh, ain't nobody got time for that anymore. No, no. It's a shame. There is, you know, I. Do you know my friend Aaron Kondratiev? I do not. Oh, my gosh. Uh, she was my first girlfriend in fourth grade, and we've remained friends. So how long is that? F 56, <sighs> something, 55 years? Yeah. Anyway, she is the most incredible photographer, and she still uses film. And you can tell the difference. It's like the difference between a CD and an LP. Well, and it would I would compare it to the difference, like if you're playing a... Uh, a tube amp right to yeah. a uh, what you, what do they call that solid state right to a solid state amplifier yeah the tube amp is much warmer mm -hmm. and I think that film does offer that also you know what we are Ronnie we are analog men in a digital world that's true <laughs> obsession with celebrities is paramount so to some most children have a smartphone by the age of 10 with the, my son is three and a half, he'll grab my phone and do this. <laughs> he knows how to use it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh oh, what did I do? I think he just took a picture of something. Oh. Uh, most children uh, have a constant flow of information about celebrities and easy access to their profiles on social media. Fame has become big business. More than half of 11 to 16 year olds identify celebrity culture as the main influence be how, behind how they look or want to look it used to be from the parents. Yep. Amazing. Well, and this one is a little bit disturbing to me. Singers now rise to stardom through reality shows. Yeah. The Voice, uh, America's American Got Idol. Talent, American Idol, 
Uh, Have you seen X that? Factor. Mask Singer. The Mask Singer. Why but in the hell are, is that show even on TV? Those are typically already established singers. Some of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just celebrities that also sing. Right. But you know what? How about being a singer and coming up through the ranks like it used to be done? Without using auto-tune. Oh, if you took away auto-tune, uh, a lot of these singers wouldn't be singers. No, they'd be fast food workers. Yeah. Uh, Auto-tune is... You and I could sound like, you know, Justin Timberlake with auto-tune. Well, I already... <laughs> uh, okay. Next up on our list, um, government is taking healthy eating more seriously. Government institutions are often blamed for being out of touch. Uh, whoops. Uh, what just happened here? Unless you never eat out, you probably have heard of Beyond Meat Burgers, oh, yeah. which contain no meat. They are plant-based patties that include water, pea protein, pea protein isolate, mm. some oils, rice protein, and flavors. Mm, that sounds yummy. Mm -hmm, I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, more, sir, please. Another meatless product, the Impossible Burger. I think that's Burger King. Which has been a huge hit. Serves it. Overall, about 95% of people who order the meatless burger are not vegans, according to 2017 data from market researcher NPD. That's kind of crazy. And I have to tell you that all those things that you mentioned were in that burger, I can't eat in my... I'm on the keto diet. Uh, rice? Nope. Uh, mostly, there's only a few vegetables that are really you know, on my list that I can eat. But and, uh, fruits are, there's even fewer fruits because you're really trying to, in, you know, limit your intake of sugar, mm -hmm. which lots of fruits have sugar. So, so Ronnie, now let's see, you're on the keto diet and right. you've lost 14 pounds. Lost 14 pounds. And I'm on the Cheeto diet and I've gained 26. So that's about. You lost weight. I found it. Yeah. <laughs> this one, oh, this is a bad, bad trend. This might be the downfall of America right here. As we know it. Parents spend less time with their children. All the time. Parents spend about 37 minutes of quality time a day with their children, uh, according to a 2019 research. The biggest reason is lack of time. People work longer, or so they have no time to do chores, postponing them for the weekend. Another reason is the kids' school schedules increase the amount of screen time um, is also to blame for families spending more time True. alone together time. Um, that's when the family is physically together, but they're all doing something different on their phones. All right, and finally this morning, home ownership in the United States has fallen and millennials are getting most of the blame. I know what you're saying. You blame us for everything. Please give me my bottle. Uh, they simply don't have the money as down payments are higher and people are struggling to pay their student debts. Many young people postpone reaching the milestone of owning a home while waiting and maybe even hoping for the next recession. Boy, that's not a way to live. Some real estate experts say this may not be wise because banks will not make the same mistakes they did before 2000. And eight. Yep. There's well, a there's a uh, very funny little comedy video out where an older guy is applying for a job, and the owner of the company is a millennial, and there's a a lot of back and forth uh, with them about the things that millennials don't have, the things that you know boomers, who the guy is obviously a boomer has, and the guy during his interview, the guy whips out a Monopoly board game. And the millennial goes, what's that? And he goes, this is the only way you'll ever own a house. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap up with that today. Thanks for watching Men Are So Smart. We sure do appreciate it. Our website is menaresosmart.com. Uh, we are on Facebook at uh, menaresosmart.com. My email is lou at menaresosmart.com. Mine is ronnie at menaresosmart.com. If you don't, for some reason, have time to watch our show, you can listen to it in podcast form. You'll find us on all of the platforms, iTunes, iHeartMedia, uh, Spotify, and more. Farmersonly.com? <laughs> no, we're not on oh, that we're not, one. Oh, no, not oh, on that one. Oh, that's that's you. That's, that's you. Sorry. Uh, thanks for watching today. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart.